All right, welcome comic fam. Back at you with another one, something a little different this time. We're going to have a little long form discussion. Uh, but just before we start, I just want to give a warning that there will be explicit spoilers, nerdy language, thematic themes, and very graphic discussions. But yeah, if your discretion is advised, and I'm here joined with uh, Hasselvania, another uh, uh, another YouTuber here. We're gonna. <laughs> he's more of a little bit of a manga background, right? Just a little bit yeah. in the comics, right? Yeah, I, I dabble. I'm com I'm a com uh, complete Superman novice, though. You know, as the most I know about him is from the Justice League cartoon. Like oh, fall, dude. Fall ride base. <laughs> oh, dude, what a good cartoon series, though. Justice League Unlimited, like, will always oh. hold a special place. It was it was done so well, you know? That's, like, my team, you know what I mean? Like, whenever I see any of the variations, I'm like, that's not right, you know? <laughs> Where's oh. Manhunter? <laughs> yeah, right? Where's Martian Manhunter? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I know, right? They're, they're going to bring him back this year, though, for, for the in the comic space. He hasn't had mm -hmm. a solo series for a while, so we're going to get a little Martian Manhunter this year. Um, I might have to check that out. I love I love that dude. You know, oh, I, mean, I know, right? <laughs> such, such, a, such a cool power set with the uh, you know kind of the emotions and the telepathy and you know <laughs> just a little, a little different going through walls. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Doing all that, doing all the awesome stuff, the superhero <laughs> stuff. So yeah, so um, we'll start off, man. So like, so what is like your origin story? Like, how did you get into comics and manga and you know YouTube? How did you get into all this kind of stuff? I guess like um with with manga anyway because that's more like my my speed yeah kind of uh the typical stuff i saw the original dragon ball dub on tv and it, like blew my little peanut brain as a kid <laughs> and uh and then i just kind of witnessed the, you know, the, the usual gateway of building up into more obscure stuff i mean uh I'm, at the moment i'm reading joe uh, jojo lands that just started so oh dude i know man i'm, I'm right there with you like I, i'm oh, a huge so jojo's good. guy so like <laughs> yeah, the new one i'm oh such a great start Oh, dude, we're, we're eating good so far. And that's, I oh, mean, yeah, as yeah, expected yeah. from a Rocky, but. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, um, for comics, though, I guess it was more, I was just a bit of a Batman simp to begin with. Love the films. So I've got like a small collection of Batman stuff and a few odd bits and bobs. I've got um, Mr. Miracle. Uh, I have recently read Fantastic Four Full Circle, which was really good, but it's more of a dabbling. You know, I, I dip in and out. I don't really keep up with it too much, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, they're definitely different spheres between comics and manga. I mean, the communities are different. The because I started off as a manga only guy, like I right. like, like you, you know, Dragon Ball Z touched my heart as a small child, and <laughs> you know, it, it just takes off from there. And then, um, you know, recently within the last, I'd say mm, probably about five years, I've got I've really I really dove into you know reading manga and you know buying more hard yeah. copies and. And things like that so that really started to you know to, I, that's when i took my deep dive into it as opposed to just you know watching an anime along the way and you know a little bit of that a little bit of this so um but yeah so diving right in <laughs> yeah yeah man yeah so so what are some some of your favorite mangas that are that you're reading right now you can either all time or what are you reading right now like yeah oh, i've got I mean, like it's it, again typical i have to say jojo i mean i've got my, my little uh my little Paul Nareff right there. Ah. Absolute boy. I love him. <laughs> um, definitely that was up there. I love uh, stuff by Junji Ito, the more horror stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, Monster for the same reason. I've got all of Bakuman, actually, which is an interesting one, which is a manga about making manga. Uh, so it's quite actually quite a range, really. I don't stick to the... Uh, I've kind of like... I think maybe I'm a bit long in the tooth for, for more shonen stuff. I think when you read all of Dragon Ball, you've had your fill of it. Right, right, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of open to a lot of stuff, you know. Nice, um, nice, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I as well, you know, I'll, it's all shonen at first, and then um, I've slowly yeah. started to, you know, piecemeal a little bit here along the way, but still a lot of the, a lot of the big stuff, you know, your Attack on Titans, your... Oh. Um, I've really been enjoying uh, Fist of the North Star is one of my like top oh. reads right now. And I have just been mm, just eating that up. I uh, I love the whole Mad Max scene. And then, man, Kinshiro is one of the most badass Absolute comic characters badass. ever. And, or manga characters, you know, animated fictional characters ever. Like, I just, his one-liners and it's just like, he, the way he can't get a better catchphrase. You know, it doesn't exist. <laughs> You're already dead. It's just peak. <laughs> oh, dude, it is. I love it. I love it. All right, so I got you to read All Star Superman. You read the first five issues, correct? Yep. 
Nice, nice. Yeah. So All Star Superman was something that uh, when I first started getting into comics, I got the the new 52 Justice League, which was is the most current reset of the universe, like the reboot, you know, DC and Marvel, they, they have to reboot the universe so, <laughs> so often because you can't have a thousand Superman comics and keep continuity very well, especially from, you know, the 30s up until now. They're different characters, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I got into that and then um, for the longest time, I, I was like, uh, man, Superman's so white bread. Like he's boring. Like, ugh. Yeah. and then as I've gotten further along, I'm like, oh no, man, Superman is, I think like, I, like you mentioned before we talked, like he is the superhero, like he's the archetypical hero. And so that led me to read all star Superman for the first time, um, which I, I love it. I think it's great. I think uh, I, I love the story that they tell with it. So but yeah, so All Star Superman. Um, so, what did you think about it? So, in your in your first initial preview and read through of this, what well, are some initial thoughts? Uh, well, like going in, yeah, I was really um, it's like I've always this has been my ra- on my radar for a while. I feel like I'm at least in, in a lot of uh, recent years, I keep seeing variations on Superman. You know, like Snyder's and Injustice and all that. And I, I, I've been wanting to get like, okay, a story that, that that's actually what Superman is. Uh, so I was really glad to give it a go. And it was kind of like exactly what I was looking for. I know that, um, and like you say, some people have this kind of like Boy Scout kind of whitewashed version of him. But I think there's a lot of charm in almost this kind of like childlike naivete to his character. You know, there's a lot of imagination. Uh, I wouldn't use the word Boy Scout, actually. I'd use the word, he's more like kind of a an upstanding kind of teacher kind of role, you know what I mean? As cheesy as that is, it's nice no, to see absolutely. that as a focus. You know, he's obviously in the story, he's kind of uh, gone some as bad as news as you can possibly get. He's got a few, uh, not a lot of time left on Earth, and it's about him choosing how to spend those last kind of like remaining moments as best as he can. Yes, uh, yes. And I found that a very endearing kind of arc to go through. Yeah, really interesting. So um, for those of you out there that don't know, All-Star Superman is basically a story of Superman. Superman saves some people close to the sun. As we know, he gets his power from the yellow suns and he gets too much radiation and it basically gives Superman cancer. And he's given he has like months to live. So this story is all about him going through and kind of tidying up his life um, to eventually die which I think is a really cool concept for a story. And um, All-Star Superman takes place kind of out of continuity. It's kind of its own self-contained little thing, which is the perfect place for a story like this because, yeah. you know, you can't go without Superman. Um, and, you know, kind of goes through and a lot of it is, especially what you got through with those first five issues, it's a lot of kind of the individual chapters are him uh, going through his individual people in his life and kind of wrapping up and, talking with them and kind of exploring the relationships between them a little bit more. I think we get a Lois Lane chapter. We get a, we get a Jimmy chapter and, (laughs) and then chapter five where you finish, which I think is one of the best chapters is we get the Lex Luthor chapter. Yeah. I was really enjoying the first four. I thought it was nice, solid. I I thought it was really engaging to see how he was saying goodbye to like, you know, Lois and Jimmy. Uh, And then issue five hits you and it is, is so good it, it it got me from like oh this is nice i might continue reading it too i'm gonna keep, i'm gonna finish this because what a good chapter he's like the, the character of lex uh, gets i think just as much exploration in that one chapter as superman does and he's oh, such yeah. an engaging villain he's, he plays off superman so well yeah oh dude it's so good and i mean i i appreciate the the kind of dichotomy between um, superman and lex you know lex luther hates superman because he didn't have to work for his powers. He yeah. got there. He showed up. He's a god, more or less. And, you know, Lex has everything else and could be all that. But he is overshadowed by Superman. And that's where a lot of his you know, animosity and hatred for Superman comes from. And like I said, they really get to explore that. And I think through this series, it also does a good job of um, exploring a little bit of Clark Kent as well, which yeah. I think the best Superman is... Clark Kent, who is Superman versus Superman, who is Clark Kent. Like it's, I, yeah, I, I think, you know, Superman should be Clark Kent's alternate identity, not Clark Kent is Superman's alternate identity. And I think this comic does a good job of 
kind of putting those, you know, sowing those seeds and and building that up a little bit because we get a lot of good like I don't know funny Clark moments. It's it it's very comical, you know. Yeah, well, it's it's good that you mentioned that because I agree. Um, he's like an infamous quote, isn't there, in Kill Bill, where the villain goes off on a tangent saying about how. Clark Kent is Superman's alter ego and it's an insult to all of humanity because he's like a dweeb. But it's not true. I mean, at least it's not what I've always wanted out of Superman. I think if you look at the Justice League cartoon, even though he's an alien and even though he's all powerful, he's ironically the most human of all the characters because at the heart, he's you know a kid from a small town in Kansas. And that's actually what makes him so kind of upstanding and such a good... Uh, person to have these powers you know what i mean yeah, uh, i think you gotta people... grow up as a person yeah, exactly yeah yeah and he learns like kind of again maybe like naive or maybe kind of old school values but they're charming to see and especially as time's gone on you know what i mean yeah you might say that outdated but again but, that's, know, i mean it's, it's, it's a bit outdated it's 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 it's, uh, it's nostalgic in a way <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and we'll take a little deeper dive here through All-Star Superman. So um, so chapter one, you know, it it kind of builds up the, you know, the, the setting for the whole story. Like Superman gets to, you know, he say there's, you know, people first manned exploration to the sun and it goes wrong because Lex Luthor has his hand in it. And, you know, he gets too close to the sun, has to make a save from a creature out there and lo and behold, ends up getting his, he gets overloaded with radiation. So therefore he, you know, his cells can't handle it. Um, so let's see where we at. And that's kind of, that's kind of chapter one. I thought it was a good setup for the story. I like that it didn't take a lot of time to get there being how this whole series is only a 12 issue run. So yeah. it was good that we got the, the premise out immediately, I think. Um, and yeah, it, it assumes you know, you know, the general gist of who Superman is, really, you know. It's, yeah, it's, it's, as we as we all should at this point, you know, he's a. I mean, <laughs> I mean no there's surprise. like Superman and there's like Dwayne the Rock Johnson, and those are like the two most known people in the world in history, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the hierarchy of the world. <laughs> the hierarchy of the world. Oh, R.I.P. Black Adam, man. <laughs> um, I think. It's almost like bad that I like because my first notes are like negative. And I feel like it's just because if you start to read the first issue, there's a bit of a hump to get over in that I'm not I think the art it's it's a bit it's a bit two thousand and six ish in that there's a lot of like gradients, there's a lot of blurring. It's it's like having fun with Photoshop, but it hasn't aged super well. Yeah. And I think it gets better in, even in the five issues. By issue five, it looks so much better. But I think some people might look at it at first and be like, oh, I'm not really a fan of this style. <laughs> you know? I agree. Um, I, I think, agree. The art is it's yeah. different. It's it's not that traditional comic booky, you know, feel to it. It has like you said, it's some of the faces are a little wonky. The proportions of the faces, it's almost like I don't know. There's a Rick and Morty. I don't know if you watch Rick and Morty. <laughs> but there's a there's a promo they do in it. It's called Little Bits, and they have like these big heads and tiny faces. And I, I that's the first thing I thought of when the the exploration to the sun goes wrong and Superman sticks his head in and is like, "Don't worry, I'll save you." And it's like he has this tiny face and this like big square head and jaw. And it's like, "Oh, all right, you know, whatever." But uh, but it does get better. It does get better. It seems they kind of get it ironed out and figure out the real flow of the art they want to do as yeah. as it goes on. I think there's a shot of some woman really early on and her facial features, they're very Frank Miller-esque. And I was yes. like, oh no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, no one else looks like that. They do they fix it as they go. So I think I would say bear with it for like half an issue, an issue, it, it gets better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, you have an issue or two to warm up. Um, and then, you know, issue two, we really kind of get into the meat of it. And issue two is when Superman, is he, you know, Clark Kent, and Lois go grocery shopping. And I, I love every time Clark's in it because he always yeah. like trips or he drops something or he does just the most unathletic things every time he's in it. And <laughs> and you got to think like him on the inside, it has to plan this. Like, you know, like yeah. Superman yeah. has to be like, oh, I better trip here. Or like, oh, I better not catch that or, you know, all this, that or the other thing. And I don't know, it, it gets me. So he comes really out. charming. 
yeah 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 it really it really shows that like oh it's he's just the guy like a good way to hide your identity which is i guess something that's a little weird in this is a lot of times lois already knows that superman and clark are the same person but this and this one she only knows superman and she works with clark but has no you know doesn't bring those two together and through the first issue as he you know comes out to lois she still just doesn't believe him. She kind of fights with him the whole time. And even through, um, you know, past issue five, almost to the end of the series, she kind of fights about that and just doesn't quite believe him and eventually accepts it. But it's a, it's a long road to get there. Um, Lois Lane in this, mm, she's okay. She's an okay character. She's a necessary character in this. Not my favorite interpretation of her. Definitely. But you know, that's okay. One interesting thing I did find about her, though, because you you know it's you see this a lot. I mean, at least in Spider Man, there's a lot of like, oh, do I like Spider Man or do I like Peter Parker? I found it interesting that Lois seems to genuinely dislike Clark, and that's partly of the conflict here. She's like, this this dickhead I've been working with is is this great superhero I've, I've loved for years. <laughs> I, I like that. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just it's just can't believe that this this bumbling giant from Kansas is Superman. Like what? Uh, yeah, and then uh, to, like um, actually compliment the arts. I love how they draw his whole configure as Clark because he's always like slumped down and he's kind of like really unimposing despite being gigantic. <laughs> I think Lex at one point even says that he's chubby because that's kind of like how he's presenting himself. He's not muscular. He's just, yeah, because like, he, he wears like the baggy clothes and the jacket yeah. over it, and just <laughs> not the spandex we're right, we're used to for sure. <laughs> <laughs> So he, you know, he brings her to the Fortress of Solitude and um, gets her the gives her his powers for 24 hours, which I thought was really neat. Um, yeah, we, you know, and I also kind of like through all the interactions there, we learn um, since he has got a hyper dose of the sun, everything is heightened. Is they explained in the first chapter, everything, you know, his intelligence is at a ten now. Everything, you know, is just bumped up and. I thought that it kind of conveyed that a lot whenever Lois was hanging around because it's almost like he brought her there for a date and then was like, oh, but I got to work on this. And I got to work on yeah. this. And like my mind's going too fast. I got to figure this out. And I thought that was kind of a neat, you know, a little touch that, you know, kind of to convey where, you know, Superman's head is right now because yeah. you know, he knows he doesn't have long and he has a lot to do. And, you know, I, I thought it was cool. Yeah, I'm kind of like, I kind of, I think, I don't know if you saw my notes, I'm kind of love-hate yeah. with that. I love the the creativity of it in that he's really kind of pushing everything he can do. There's a, there's a great line about how he's put all the endangered species in a drawer, you know, he shrunk them and kept them safe in a drawer. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, it's like that kind of exaggerated do-goodingness. Um, yeah. But he also mentions that his, like, his emotions are, are, are extended, so he's dealing with almost dying really well because he's operate on this new level and i guess that's fine but i don't i would have liked this to believe this is just how superman would react not a superman who's like operating on another level um i don't know i just didn't think that was needed but like i said the other part of it's great i love you know they get really creative with the fortress yeah 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 it has all the cool stuff i love that and this this is stuck around the really heavy key to get in the door like to the the door to unlock the fortress of solitude. He just yeah, leaves it on the yeah, ground in front of it because he's like, yeah, pick it up. Like, try to get in here. I don't care. <laughs> he's just like flexing on her. He's like, you can't do it. I can. <laughs> and it's cool. Like, uh, so just mention the key. So at the end, whenever he like closes up shop, he puts a doormat over it. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, it's just like that. It's got it's a it's a really charming series. There's loads of like little almost like slice of life comedy moments sprinkled. Through. Yeah, yeah, and I thought the the comedy was a cool, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, juxtaposition or something to yeah. to the the tone of like, hey, Superman's dying, but it's really light through a lot of it. Like it's fun, and yeah. I like that they keep the energy up through it, and it's not just doom and gloom. Like you know, Frank Miller's done a lot of Batman, and you know, Batman's very much like, oh, my parents are dead. I have, everything sucks. <laughs> I have a plan for everything, and and so it's cool to see a little bit more comedy injected. And it, for the right reasons, because Superman, you know, like you, you said earlier, he, he's just a dude. He's a lighthearted guy. He just wants to do the right thing. And mm. um, I think putting them comedy elements were important. And, uh, you know, then he gives Lois his powers. They go on a little adventure together. They fight like a some kind of Earth creature that comes out of the Earth's crust. And yeah. just real funny, you know, generic superhero stuff. And I thought that was so neat. 
And I almost the... think it was a bit more because I don't think they do too much with her having powers. It, it it does feel a bit more like we've got Superman dashing around, so we need a way to, for for Lois to keep up. But there's yeah. a there's a great moment where she's just watching him do something, and a giant boulder just falls on her head and just cracks into it. She's like, <laughs> you know, again, it's like the little moments are so good. Oh yeah, and then they're yeah sprinkled throughout, and you know, then we uh, I love that I think the first issue ends with. I think it's the first or second issue ends with uh, Lois and Superman having a kiss on the moon, which was a really good, um, you know, full page art that they they put in there. Yeah, I think they they do really good with the the full page spreads. They, they, they don't just like it's not just for action scenes. They they do it for like big moments like that. It really, yeah, pays off. Yeah, and that, and that's one thing you know difference between comics and manga. I do like like the color added in. I think adds to mm -hmm those full page spreads. And I love my full page spreads in my mangas, but uh, I don't know. I, I really like just the color added. It just, it just puts a little bit of extra oomph on them, cut on them full pages. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I said, that's like an endless debate, isn't it? Manga versus Western art. And I might admit I'm on the camp of manga, but there's obviously strengths like that on the Western comics and uh, being able to just turn a page and see a big vista to like communicate an emotion of a moment is a, a big strength of the medium. I, you know, they do it really well in this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we we get to issue two, and you know we have let's see. So issue two, I think we I think we oh issue two right we follow we're still Lois still has superpowers and um, what is it is it Hercules and Samson. Oh. Samson, they show up. <laughs> they show up as time travelers. <laughs> yeah, I, that was completely foreign to me. I, I'm a familiar with Hercules and Marvel, not the DC version, who was, you know, just a giant cock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's like they roll up. They're like, yo, what's up, Soups? Like, they've just been there before, time traveling. All it's like they're just time traveling buddies. He's like, yo, what's up, Soups? Hey, who's this girl you got with you, man? Like, I think I'm going to try to hit on her because... I've seen the newspaper from three months from now and looks like you're dying, bro. So uh, I'm going to try to, you know, flex on her and uh, try to pick her up in your face. And yeah, literally he's, he's like, oh, she's going to need a shoulder to cry on. You know? <laughs> Slime ball. Yeah. Yeah. I issue three, I think was weird. I, I could have took, taken her left issue three. I issue three right. does kind of start the, I think it's his second. Uh, like he has to do his 12 labors before he dies. It's kind of the, each comic he does a labor. Um, and the labor in the third one is he has to answer the unanswerable question from that random pharaoh dude that you know that comes out. Yeah, you just kind of slow. <laughs> I don't know, just kind of out there and random. And um, you know, we do a little time travel. You know, we don't do any time travel in there, but I like how it ends with uh, Superman arm wrestling both of them at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a satisfying end for those characters. <laughs> yeah, they just kind of they just kind of show up and they're just kind of a dick and then they leave. So I don't, I don't know. So I, I think definitely through the all twelve issues, I think issue three is probably my least favorite. I I going into issue four, I didn't Jimmy Olsen. I'm okay with. I don't love him. I know that you're a Jimmy Olsen fan. From I like, yeah, I mean, because again, thinking about who Superman is, I like the idea of him having this little pal. He tags along and gets in, gets into mischief. It's very Archie comics, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So people seem to really do hate him. I don't know whether you hate him, but uh, Snyder hated him when he when he shot him in the face. <laughs> Snyder <laughs> definitely hated Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I like. I think he's a fun uh, little addition. I wouldn't like. He had his own comic, didn't he? I wouldn't have like read a comic about him, but it was a fun issue. I thought. Back back in the day, Jimmy Olsen, friend of Superman, was its own series. Like back in like like late golden silver age, like back old Superman, Jimmy yeah. Olsen had his own thing. So like he's a big deal. Like he's a staple in the Superman world. But I don't hate him. But mm, I can <laughs> take him or leave him. You know? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. Issue four was all right. I think that uh, you know we in issue four, I think we Superman starts kind of more realistically, I think, coming to terms with his impending death, which kind of really begins to carry on after that, um, which is which is good because you eventually, you know, he has to deal with that stuff. Like, he can't not deal with it. Yeah. And then even uh, the most, you know, 
optimistic strongest man on earth is gonna have like a moment where they're like you know shit i'm dying yeah um, a lot of uh, a lot of you know you get later in it and there, there are a lot of moments of uh him like sitting in a chair and he has like a i don't know he's like like a talk to or like a, like a speech to text thing but for like you know kryptonian so it's like a little headpiece and it right. writes it on the wall and you know i don't know and you know there's a lot of moments where he's just sitting there and he's just kind of disheveled and broken down and i think we get our first panel where he's like a little sweaty thinking about like oh god this is happening yeah and it was good but we get to issue five and i think that we both agree issue five is probably the strong i think it might be the strongest through it all because i just love the interaction between lex and clark and yeah ever just the dialogue and everything that said the whole situation as clark goes to interview lex lex has been put on death row i don't think i mentioned that earlier for killing superman yeah. and so clark goes to interview him to like oh so why'd you do it da 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 um and you know just the and then there's a prison riot that breaks out and now clark is yeah. trapped in the prison with lex and i like how the riot starts and lex the whole time's just like calmly walking around like yeah i'm gonna run this place in a day or two da 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 and there's just <laughs> chaos around them <laughs> It, it is like pure delusion that like he, he presents himself as all knowing and this this genius, but he can't figure out that this dude just behind him is like doing all this stuff to save his life because he could like die like ten times during this issue, you know. Oh yeah, man, the egomaniac right. really shines through yeah. in issue five, and I just love it because that's that's the Lex we all want. I think that's the Lex we got in uh like not as much in the Justice, well, Justice League Unlimited, yeah, but the the old Justice League, like from the 90s, I think, maybe it's from the 80s, the Legion of Doom Lex was a little bit more cartoony, and that was fine, but I this version of Lex is like by far my favorite. Like this yeah. is this is Lex Luthor to me. And just, you know, Clark's in there saving everyone, saving Lex's life, you know, tripping into him and, you know, getting him to move out of the way. And the whole time Lex is just like, man, I really hate Superman. Like that dude sucks. And, <laughs> and then he's like giving backhanded dunking compliments to Clark. And it's like, oh, I like you a lot, Clark. You're, you're a bumbling idiot. You're everything Superman is. <laughs> yeah, you're human, Clark. You're everything that he's not. Yeah. And, you know, Lex is like working out like this is what real muscle is. I didn't get these powers from being born. I had to work for this this is what this yeah. is what it's really like and <laughs> i'd love it because even he's got like superman to do it and superman's towering over him and he's like if you put a bit of work in you might look this good <laughs> yeah you might put a little work in maybe you could look like superman clark it's like ah, oh, because he is like yeah. i actually it actually that made me realize actually that almost like i'm thinking about manga in almost like a bizarre world lex would be the main character you know because they put so much emphasis on training and earning your power. Even if you are a chosen one, you still have to put the work in to get it. Uh, whereas Western comics, especially DC, they love them all, like, you know, getting gifted with it and then what are you going to do with it? You know? Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's a really good point. You know, especially yeah, from I mean, Lex would be a main character, like, <laughs> in any manga, you know? I agree. I, I agree. <laughs> And that's that's a cool point because that that's a big difference between uh, comics and manga is the like what what you just said you know manga pro tags have to earn it aside from a few of them but even like Goku who was you know born with a lot of power uh, mm -hmm. still had to train in order to achieve goals and yeah. that's something we don't see a lot in DC and I think that's probably my least favorite part especially DC just DC to Marvel DC is definitely much like. DC is there's gods among us mm -hmm. as the superheroes where Marvel is a little bit more street level because we have like Spider-Man, Daredevil, you know, Iron Man who Iron Man did kind of have to work for it, but he's still he's still super billionaire, rich genius before anything. You know, yeah. Batman has always been awesome, even though they we get a couple moments of him bumbling around a little bit like training and learning how to do the things. But, you know, in the end, they're all pretty much where they're at. And there's not a lot of power growth. There's no. Um, you know, like uh, I'm sure you've seen Demon Slayer. Yes, yeah, the power yeah. creep. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, with Demon Slayer, like Tanjiro, man, talk about a character that works for it and puts in the work. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I remember watching it the first time and never being so hype to watch somebody cut a boulder in half. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's such a great scene. Like, oh, you just you know you don't, you don't get that in Western comics and and you just don't get that. No. that that's definitely a strength of manga over comics for sure and something that i always missed i so I'll, I'll talk every once in a while about how i wish that 
you know, I like the longer form storytelling. I'm a huge One Piece fan. So all the same. Oh, dude. Sorry, I mean, I, I love One Piece. Like, dude, a thousand, you know, what, 57 chapters right now. And like, dude, it could go for a thousand more. Like, I'm into it. Like, we could have like, 20 <laughs> chapters of just the straw hats on the boat just shooting the shit. And I am invested. Like, I'm <laughs> there for it. And comics tend to have a, they have to go in a quicker pace because the release schedule, you get one comic a month, really. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of time in between. So they got to push the pace and they don't always get enough time to to work for that, you know, upgrade and that level up and and all that and you know, something that kind of misses but you know we still get great you know other moments like you know yeah. we get we get through that and and with and with issue five with all-star superman i like the ending i really enjoyed i love the whole the whole thing but the ending i like how clark finally kind of loses his temper at lex when he's like you know you could have solved all these problems you could have been superman but here you are just trying to kill him and you know Lex is still stuck in his like, well, he's a god, like oh, he's uh, he yeah. spits in the face of humanity, like how dare he? And <laughs> Clark even doesn't even mention anything when Lex has to draw his eyebrow on. And <laughs> I, was, I listed that as like one of my a, a moment I really liked in issue five. It's because Superman so far in the five issues has been largely really composed and really kind of like in control. Uh, not always, but. He's a great moment where he just yells at Lex and he goes, what the hell are you doing letting them kill you? You're going to die like a dog in the street. You can't get the logic there. Uh, yeah. And it's nice to see frustration coming out, even if it's because he doesn't want to see Lex die in a weird way. Yeah, <laughs> at least because, not like this. Yeah, I mean, because he's Superman. He wants the best for everybody. And he always sees the best. And, and he has to because he's a god, more or less. You know, he, he has to be be that archetypal hero that you know you you've talked about you know where you know, compared to batman batman has his i don't kill people you know i'm all about justice because you know his parents were murdered and, and it's so definitely he's definitely like more of a trauma that he doesn't kill people than any kind of righteousness you know where you know superman and you said you, you know you're familiar with the injustice storyline a little bit a little bit yeah so you know that's like the take of okay superman's like all right well you guys aren't fixing the problem. I'm going to fix the problem. And then we get Tyrant Superman, which is yeah. a bad thing every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of sick of seeing Tyrant Superman. It was such a breath of fresh air to see nice, you know, good Superman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I agree so much, man. I, I I love the characterization that Clark and Superman get through all this. And, and I think, you know, issue five really, really shows that you know, kind of the crux of that impasse that him and Lex just can't get past. And yeah, so going past that, just to fill you in a little bit on what happens through the rest of the story. So the the last, I guess, six, seven issues are a lot of Superman doing the rest of his 12 feats. Um, at one point, he gets sucked into Bizarro World and they don't have a yellow sun because yellow sun hurts bizarro because you know he's the opposite yeah and he gets stuck in there and he almost dies and really i think it's issue maybe nine ten at this point um the issues up until then are just kind of more of you know no oh, i gotta he like creates a universe at one point in a in a bottle to figure out you know what is a world without me going to look like like what do i need to leave in order to right ensure everything is okay so you know that was one of his labors was you know creating life so he made a universe um you know he gets the robots and all the superman robots to like hey you know you got to take care of these endangered animals you got to you know you got to do this you got to make sure this happens and just kind of starts really delegating out his last moments and then we get to this bizarro arc and i mean superman isn't able to fly anymore he's i mean he's all but dead and he finally gets sent back into our world because he, you know, has to bizarre win. They have a cube earth and it comes to invade earth. So he has to take care of that and he gets sucked in there. So then he has to get it back out and he doesn't have the yellow sun the whole time he's in there. And the bizarro characters can't really help him because they've been in the yellow sun for week for a few weeks. So they don't have right. any power. So it's, it's, it's a fun arc. It, you know, gets there and then we get to the ending and I think the ending is really cool. So, we get to Lex's execution. Right. And he's in the electric chair. They inject him. And then they turn on the thing. And Lex's eyes start going red. And Lex is like, thanks for injecting me with that. I had made a 
24 hour Superman serum that right. because of this, now it's activated. So now we have Superman on deathbed and Lex now has the powers of Superman. And so right, he yeah. goes out into the world, starts, you know, all right, you guys are going to listen to me. I'm going to handle this how Superman should have. And, you know, just starts taking people out. And then uh, Clark rushes into the, uh, the Daily Planet and, you know, submits his article that he's been writing this whole time. You get little previews of that toward the end of the death of Superman. He writes right. his own obituary, more or less. And for a moment, uh, we get Clark, he dies right there right and then we get a little kind of internal monologue with his um with his like kryptonian father and we get the real cool quote of um i know if you've seen um zack snyder superman he the whole like you know they'll stumble they'll fall but one day right. they'll go into the sun and that 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 comes from all-star superman i think on the second to the last issue so that's where that quote that. comes from really cool really cool how they set it yeah. up and so Superman kind of gets a second wind all of a sudden, you know, and he's in the Daily Planet, he rips off his thing, puts on the super suit one more time, and he's really weak. And he tries to, like, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lex, and Lex kind of beats the snot out of him. And right. so he has to get a little more crafty. So he gets, um, Lex has his powers for 24 hours, like I said, and so Superman pulls out a gravity gun, and he shoots him with it, and... You know, Lex is like, oh, so you made me heavier. And seems like, I can see it. You're struggling to fly. Like, what do you, you know, you know that this is weighing on you. And he's like, oh, whatever, I'm fine. And, you know, he keeps going on and, you know, beating up Superman. And then Clark's like, or then Superman's like, hey, so, you know, you, you should be smart enough to know that gravity bends space time. And so we get to the point where Lex's powers run out a little faster than they should have from that. And yeah. the last thing Lex does is he looks around with, you know, superman's uh you know he has he can you know see cellular things and he can see all this you know he has supervision and lex looks around and he's like oh so this is what superman sees the whole time like i see all the atoms i see the connection and we're all really just in this together aren't we right and he has this epiphany moment of like this is why superman acts and does what he does because this is what he sees and i think that's a really cool way that they finally are able to bridge that gap between the ideology of lex and superman that sounds really interesting that sounds good uh, can you just tell me though do they actually follow through with superman dying superman. i was a little worried from from the very start that they might chicken out they superman dies at the end so it's a, it's a little bit up to interpretation so lex loses, sees everything superman just socks him in the face real hard and he and drops him and uh you know lex eventually gets put on death row and the the last thing superman says to lex is you know you always talk like you could have saved the world and you could have done all this and lex is like i could have i could have if it wasn't for you and superman's like if you could have you would have already done it yeah and that's where yeah. it kind of ends it cuts and um the ambiguous ending that we get not super ambiguous but uh superman you know he's starting to crack and kind of loses color so he flies to the sun because they he had fought sun eater before then is it one of his other labors was kind of the heart of the sun comes out and you know tries to destroy earth yada 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 and um so superman flies into the middle of the sun and kind of the panel that we get at the end is um superman is making an artificial heart for the sun so you see him kind of with this like lever and he's like kind of pumping the sun to keep it going right and that's where it ends and it's a little ambiguous because you know the papers and everyone's like oh superman's dead and lois looks up at the sun and is like which she shouldn't do because she shouldn't stare at the sun by the way that's bad so <laughs> get some sunglasses lois <laughs> and she, she doesn't go to his funeral and jimmy's like hey lois why would you not go to superman's funeral and she's like because he's not dead i know he's out there He's, you know, keeping the sun alive, da, 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 but, and then it kind of ends with that. So it's very much implied that Superman has died, but it kind of leaves a little, maybe some interpretation for anyone that, you know, you could argue either way, but I, I feel like, you know, they go ahead and kill him off. It's, it's a limited run. It's not the main continuity. You I'm can looking at that page off. right now of him, but I love that. That's really like, it's almost like, but there's already been references to kind of like Greek, Greek mythology, but that's a kind of really kind of old school kind of myth, a logical kind of setup for him to be. And, you know, he's powering the sun with a leave. That's great. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really cool pan, really cool page at the end. And, and just the way they ended, I love it because, you know, Superman is, 
he's still keeping everyone alive because you know we need the sun and oh uh, man i just top to bottom i i really like all-star superman i think it's good there's a there's an animated movie they made that is also right. really good um but pretty much it's, follows it's a good because they can be a bit hit and miss can't they the dc animated films is that a good one Sometimes, yeah. This one pretty much follows it beat for beat. They do a slight difference at the end um, that just gives Lex a little bit more of a redemption. But right. like he, Lex gives like the DNA code to merge human and kryptonite or cr- human and krypton DNA to the the scientist that you know Superman worked with throughout the book. I think he saw a right, few in yeah. the first five chapters, and then we get the last panel is. Um, one of the scientists is standing in front of this, like you know, he might be gone now, but. He'll be back, and there's this big, I don't know, vat cauldron thing, this iron drum looking thing, and it has a big two on it instead of the S for Superman. So, you know, <laughs> implying that we're going to make another Superman. But yeah, but yeah, well, like, top to bottom, it's good. But the DC animated movies, I, I really, I've enjoyed them. I, a lot of people have some mixed reviews about it but starting with the flashpoint and going through them in order they are really good i think they they do a good job of... I, I, I like i dip in, i dip in and out yeah with yeah. Them. uh i've seen red hood which was really good okay yeah um I, I didn't like flashpoint but then i don't think i like flashpoint anyway so <laughs> that's fair <laughs> it wasn't gonna tell me um yeah it's 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 give and take um i love that ending i like the idea of like keeping the keeping his spirit alive and I like how it, it seems like the writers the whole time were kind of like saying almost like definitively, this is what Superman is. And it sounds like with the ending, they're kind of like also pointing to Lex and saying, that's what he isn't. And I feel like that Lex is Superman's what we've been seeing a bit more recently. Yeah. And I like the idea of just someone saying, no, he is who he is and he is what he means to people. And I, yeah, that sounds great. It really does sound good. Yeah. Yeah. No, really cool. Really cool. I, like I said, I, I loved it. So you know, coming, coming from a manga background a little bit. So like definitely like we've kind of already you know, mentioned a little bit, a very different style of writing and storytelling from the, you know, the manga protagonist thing. And yeah, I, I think it's cool. I think it's, it's a, just a, another way, you know, it's a, it's the Western way. Well, American way, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the British way. It's, it's too, it's too optimistic for the British way. Yeah, it's too optimistic. You guys, you guys got to find your own superhero, you know, whatever. Oh, uh, actually, that was something I pointed out. Actually, was I think both Western and manga have issues with comedy. I think in different ways. Uh, I think I feel like Western comics, it's often just kind of like long text paragraphs, you know, building up to like a punchline. It doesn't always land. Um, and then manga has a real problem where something will happen and then a character will kind of like inch over from the panel and scream what was happening. And what I liked about the comedy in this is it's very farcical. It's very kind of uh, animated, very kind of, um, what's the word, you know, Animate, I guess the best word for it. It's very, it's again, I likened it a bit more to kind of European British humor. Yeah. That whole issue five where you got Lex kind of bumbling around thinking he's invincible with Superman saving him while also making it look like he's saving him by accident is very, it's almost even French in a way. You know, you don't see it in either <laughs> medium that much. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, because um, you, you did a whole video on um, uh, manga comedy, right? Yes, yeah, I touched on it and how to translate it, and uh, yeah, it's like I think like any medium, it's it, they've, they've all got their own issues, and this was kind of a really interesting. You don't see it much just in either or, you know. There's a lot of time spent of just like he's how the characters are moving, and that's what's funny about it, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the 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 oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I like that. I also was interested. Again, just thinking about manga comparisons, obviously a lot, a great deal is spent on um, secret, the secret identity of Superman and being revealed and how it's a big deal. I think as a concept, that's even, it's kind of going on its way out. I feel like very few superheroes are kind of keeping their identity a secret, like a Batman and Spider-Man. But compared to manga, that's, that's never a thing, really. Whereas in Western comics at the time, it was always a thing. Every hero was hiding their identity. Manga, it's always not. And I was, I thought it was interesting. Even their version of Western heroes, My Hero Academia, there's no secret identities, even though they're very heavily doing Western heroes. And I thought, I wonder why that is. I wonder why they don't have any kind of interest in 
a hero doing the right thing, but anonymously, you know, yeah. whereas over here, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I don't think I have an answer for it, but yeah, you know, I, I had never thought of that until, um, you know, you, you, you sent me some of your notes and I'm like, Oh man, I never thought of that. Like, yeah. Like, you know, manga, they're just them. I mean, there are a lot of times like, you know, look at like my hero, which is a yeah. superhero based thing. Like they're superstars. They leverage or, or one punch man, you know, they leverage their, their superheroism as that's just who they are. Like there's no, yeah. you know, hiding it. Like the, the only, like, the only thing I can think of of someone hiding their identity would be all might, but not really just yeah. hiding that he's tiny. But then even that eventually, you know, they, they're like, yeah, well, here he is now, you know, which is, yeah, that is like, say, like um, Dragon Ball, where the heroes all kind of undercover. They don't, they're kind of below the radar, but they never like hide themselves. It's, it's almost like comical that no one's count on what, like, who they are. You know what I mean? That's because Hercule is the savior of humanity. Oh, my God. That's why, obviously, he's the strongest man the ever. Best, the best boy in the world. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> where's, my, where's my Hercule manga? I, I, I want to see more of his feats. <laughs> Dude, right? Yeah, right? Like, let's let's get the prequel for Hercule's story. I'd, I'd buy that. I'd read that, man. <laughs> I'd, buy, I'd, I'd buy it. Oh, big of it. Wait, 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 wait. So you know I'm an absolute massive reeve. I've got my little four-star Dragon Ball right here as we talk. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Man, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I got my uh, mentioning it. We saw Jojo earlier. I got my got my Jotaro oh, hat. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love it. The little lucky land hand. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't be like it's it's so easy to suddenly start collecting all this, this crap and put it in your flat. Oh, you I know, I know, man. It, it adds up. It adds up. That's that's why you almost gotta have a room like a room designated for just nerd stuff. Like it's Shame like, room. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, like dudes or anyone that's into this kind of stuff. We're like dragons. We just like hoard, you know, like, Oh, I hoard my comics <laughs> and hoard my nerdy things. And you know, the statue I got, and you know, you just, you keep it all. The difference is no one else would want it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, like I don't have to put it in the living room. Like... Yeah. I think that the last, uh, well, another note I had about the difference between manga yeah. There's obviously morality in manga and Western comics is actually kind of more similar than I think you might think. Um, heroes are kind of altruistic and kill as a last resort in both. Even like, um, I'm trying to think of an example. Even Dragon Ball, again, which is very violent, very action driven. Goku always gives them you know, the benefit of the doubt, gives them the, you know, the third, fourth chance to turn it around. And then the bad guy kills themselves all like it's their own downfall. There's no choice. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, all it's uh, the, the characters themselves in a lot of manga. Like it's their, you know, their their character flaw is their is what do, does them in. Where the pro tags, their character yeah. flaw is what drives them to uh, I have to be better. Like I have to, you know, go that next level, go further beyond, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it's interesting too, because I think Western comics criticizes it more. I mean, we always get the same, you know, why don't you kill the Joker, Batman? He's, he's killed millions. And I think you could say the same here, maybe. Um, Lex is not only killed Superman, uh, he's on death row, so he's going to die soon. And Superman's still trying to save him. But I felt yeah. like it's almost like arguing with a brick wall, saying that Superman should be pessimistic and just let him get electrocuted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um is that sense of just like, even if it's like the last couple of seconds, give him a chance, you know, you see the best in everyone. Yeah. I mean, and, and another, yeah. another scene at the end, uh, Clark is one of the last people before Lex gets his superpowers. Uh, Clark goes and is like, Hey man, you know, why'd you do it? Like, you know, you don't, you could have done everything. And Lex just spits at him through the glass. <laughs> like just no, fuck that. Um, <laughs> this is who I am dog. Like I ain't changing. <laughs> Actually, I'm I'm thinking like I've actually just like had like a dormant memory kind of flashback. Um there's an episode of Justice League, isn't there, where Lex gets cancer? And there's a kind of like scene where Superman takes him to hospital and he's like really worried about him and then like throws a clipboard at him. Do you think that was that like based on this comic run at all? Does that timeline line up? I don't uh, know. So it probably um hard to tell because you know this comic's kind of its own self-contained and i'm sure a lot of you know through the years people have pulled you know little things out but i i'm gonna say justice league unlimited maybe was at the same time or a little before this came out yeah i think just um, interesting it's like i suddenly the parallels of that i might just be because those are the, the way the characters are it's really interesting to put them in those situations anyway you know it's what happens 
Yeah, yeah, and 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 you know, kind of with the comparison to manga, how they how each you know side puts their pro tags and their villains in similar but really kind of different thematical situations when it comes yeah. to like how is how are we going to exploit this character or how are we going to show what this character is really about where i feel like western comics sometimes are a little bit more straightforward where manga likes to almost i don't want to say have more nuance but i would say as a whole has a little bit more nuance when it comes to you know villain motivations and mm. things like that a lot of western i feel like is I want to take over the world. You slided me once. I have to destroy your whole life. Yeah. Like, you know, very much like that where you get, you know, and, and you have that in, you know, Japanese as well. But, you know, even, you know, Dragon Ball has been, been our good example through this. Like yeah. even Cell's motivation was to, you know, become the perfect life form. Like at least it yeah. was kind of it's while selfish, kind of his own, his own motivation that it was yeah. intrinsic. And it didn't really have to do with, um, you know, killing this person. I mean, I guess he was coded to kill Goku, but you know, he had a lot of other baggage around that, you know, and then you get Frieza who just hates monkeys. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you still get just the pure evil, but you know, it's done well. It's done really well. I think. I love Sol too. Cause like, was he also like programmed to be like the smarmiest British guy in the world? <laughs> Did they code that into him? Something dude, else, dude, I love Frieza, man. Frieza is uh, such, such a good villain, dude. <laughs> It was interesting you bring that up because actually I also thought about this in that while that's completely true and I agree, I think the threats they pose to the heroes are different in, in that I think it's rare you see a hero fight another villain who's like equal to them or even stronger. Whereas in manga, you know, it's quite often he's this big mountain they have to climb and the arc ends with them defeating the villain finally after trying so hard. Yeah. Whereas yeah. it's, you know, it's like Batman's never going to lose to Riddler in a fight. It's yeah. more about the complex situation they put them in. And then the fight's normally like a couple of pages with, with a lot of talking. It's it's more about kind of like what's Lex going to do that's going to like weigh on Superman and like make him question himself then. You know, he's going to beat him in a fight. <laughs> normally anyway. Yeah, yeah, I think that's I, interesting. It's more yeah, like kind you of... Mentioned, like Lex in his robot suits, it's not as fun. Cause... It's not. It's not. I don't like it, no. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it doesn't have that in it, and I know I had a big problem. There's a the the last Miles Morales series that they put out. Um, it, it ended, and they've continued again now. But yeah. then the final boss fight, they really you know they had this nice probably I don't know six or so issue arc, and you know they really built up. It was a it was a clone of Miles, and you know Miles is very much like a universe hopper. Yeah. So they had this evil Miles they built up, and the final fight they just kind of stood on the side of a building, traded a couple blows. Like there was no webbing. There was no, you know, miles, uh, you know, arachno sting. There was none of that in it. It was really kind of short, sweet and to the point, you know, yeah. kind of to bounce off what you're saying with a lot of Western comics, the fights are quicker. Cause once they get there, it's more about the, the journey to the final fight, as opposed to yeah. manga is the final fight itself is what gets us hype. Like that's what we're there for. I don't know whether it's even controversial to say, but I can't think of like a great fight scene in Western comics. I can think of some impactful moments like Batman having his back broken. But if you said, what's the best fight in Western comics? I'd be like, what fight? You know, I can't think of any. <laughs> you know? I, I agree. I really agree. Um, because I, I got into comics uh, heavy about a year ago is when I really started kind of my comic journey and yeah. you know, started collecting and reading more and all that. And um, yeah, I have yet to run into a fight that I'll be sitting around during the day and like, yo, that was hype. Like, I'm gonna I'm a look at that yeah. again. Yeah, like, yeah. Where manga, I mean, I could rattle off, you know, 20 just sitting here, you know, of just epic, <laughs> epic fights. Like, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've watched like All Might vs. Nomu. Like, oh, yeah. And that oh. was just like some, I was like almost like fodder. That was such a great fight scene. It was just some cannon fodder he was going against. Yeah, and, and the fights in manga tend to have a little bit more emotional weight to them. As opposed to a lot of, you know, the the emotional weight's front loaded in Western comics. Like the the yeah. stakes are already set, and then once we get to the fight, it's almost like a formality that we have to fight each other. Versus it's more about what they're saying to each other than the actual punching at the, at, at that point, you know. Yeah, which I, which I definitely think is the strength of manga because they they show rather than have to tell about why this final fight is important. Um, yeah. with, with the All Might versus Nomu fight, you know, that was very much like, this is the last prime All Might fight we think we might get until we got 
all for one. But even still, that was almost a broken All Might. You know, yeah. that All Might versus No Moon, it was all about the changing of the guard. And like, you know, here's kind of the old generation of heroes starting to phase phase forward and you know now that we got you know getting deku and bakugo and everybody kind of start bringing them up to that level because you know they really did it i think there was there's probably a training arc right after that where they like okay let's increase our abilities and um yeah that, that's a really good point about the difference in in these final fights in that because i can't think of a, a western fight that really gets me hype either and talk about one piece too even when there isn't really like the most late re recent fight, uh, Luffy versus Kaido, I can't say it was that invested in any beef they had, but then the fight was so visually stunning with like, especially with the, the fifth gear, that almost didn't matter. You know, it's such a like spectacle and a treat. Whereas again, like you said, with like like with Miles Morales, it's normally a few panels of punches and then we're done. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And there, yeah, there's never, I mean, there's never, I haven't read a whole issue of comic where half of it or more was just trading blows, you know, just throwing hands like yeah. where manga, you know, I mean, dude, what Wano reading it was like three years. Like, you know, oh, I mean, the, the <laughs> roof piece was a year alone, I think. Like, I mean, you know, we got to watch these guys fight and slug it out and got to see all the cool stuff that we're there to see. We're see we're here to see awesome super people do super things. And yeah. Man, will you really get that in you know manga versus versus American comics? And that's you know I, I'll never give up manga. I mean I, I love it. I still you know I'm I'm still up and reading and all yeah. that. And and that that's a that's a, another real big difference. I agree with that. I like that. And maybe actually because now you now we even mention it. When I look at the comics I own over here, I've got like Long Halloween and Mister Miracle. I've got the Fable series. All kind of like my favorite stuff is like when they don't even try to do it. You know. You know what I mean? They know the strength, small, like the story and the talking, and there's not even any fight scenes, I think, in any of those. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and um, and I, I think manga, even reading it, but I think the the fact that we have anime also really enhances that because there is no like, oh, a, you know, comic series comes out, and I guess what it has a it has a cartoon to go along with it. Like that doesn't happen a lot. A lot of times, even yeah. with like the the DC animated universe they built up, you know, we're 10 years ahead of where they were starting almost at mm -hmm. times. So, you know, not as much the new 52, they adapted uh, to kind of kick it off there after the flashpoint when it's like when Doom doomsday comes and, you know, kind of, or with, sorry, not doomsday when uh dark side comes and, you know, so yeah. they kind of adopt it in stride. And I don't know, I think they should do more of that in comics and, you know, give the, the animators a little bit more leeway to make these awesome moments because you yeah. know, I mean, you know, you you know, Demon Slayer with uh, episode what thirteen or whatever it was, like you know, trending on Twitter for like two days. I mean, huge. Everyone knew yeah. about this, and you know, so it draws a lot of eyes and readers, and you know, you know, money back into the product. Where Western comics just they don't have that. No, yeah, it's like budget wise, I don't think they'd ever get the budget anime gets to enjoy, which is a shame. But then I think back, like. Teen Titans as a show had a lot of like really cool sequences, so they could still be like doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, it I feels mean, like they every can now they do it. They, they, it feels like they're all like comedies now, which is actually interesting. It's a bit all Western comic shows are like really kind of like low budget comedy slice of life stuff, which is uh, I guess is maybe a sign of the times. But I miss I miss the old action shows like Justice League, yeah. and Teen Titans. Absolutely. Like, I just want to see him throw hands, man. That's all I want. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Get him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, in, in the comic community, like kind of what we're talking about is one of the big issues that we bring up. Like, I know, um, like with the, there's no animated adaptations. A lot of people kind of feel like the comics, I don't know, a, a clickbaity topic a lot is comics are dying, like sales are down, manga's taking over, like, and it's like, well, look at what how they're marketing this, like, you know, like you get more with it, like, oh man, I really like this Demon Slayer anime. I, you know, I've only got season one. I'm gonna start buying the manga. I'm gonna invest in the product a little bit more. And yeah. you know, Western comics just don't have that extra funnel into getting people interested in reading more comics. Yeah, I feel like despite their best efforts, these not great pickup points. It's all right for me. I can look up and see what are the good one-off stories I can jump into. But the fact these legwork at all is, is, is a barrier. I always Absolutely. say that 
if you want to see how you know the field's actually doing, go to like major chains that sell books like Waterstones and see how much space they've given manga compared to how much space they've given comics because they'll just do what sells the most and that normally will give you a good visual on how each field's doing and I feel like oh. now it's like 90% to 10%. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I was just in Barnes & Noble which is probably the equivalent. Yeah, um, yeah same thing? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, yeah. <laughs> books. Bookstore, yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's fair. Bookstore, yeah. And, uh, you know, manga has this nice, beautiful section. It's very organized, you know, and it's good that everything comes from a single source, like one author, you know, like Araki yes. does all of JoJo's. So I want to read JoJo's. Where do I start? Issue one. Like yeah. the guesswork's out of it where it's like, hey, I want to start reading Batman. Like, where do I start? Well, you know, here's eight <laughs> runs. Here's eight different, art, you know, artists, well. and writers and. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's such a barrier um, to in order to get people into comics, which is which is a problem. It's I don't know. I think it's tough because with Western comics, you have all these legacy characters um, and mm. kind of tying into that. Another big complaint in the community is we don't get any fresh characters like there's no fresh characters that take off where, yeah. you know, you get one ant or one manga that takes off. And it's like, dude, like, you know, like, you know, 10 years ago, who's Asta? Like now it's like, oh, dude, Black Clover is awesome. Like every, you know, Austin, we know who this is. Yeah. Like we know these new characters and you don't get that there. And um, because you don't, you know, it's, where do you jump on? But with, with these legacy characters, you know, you've been writing Superman as a character for almost a hundred years now. So it's yeah. like, what more can you do? Like where else aside from, you know, rebooting the universe or here's like a, it's own, like all-star Superman, it's own self-contained adventure, like, what more can you do with these? And that makes it, like you're saying, really confusing for anyone that wants to read comics to read them because where do I start? And that's you're bringing up the death thing again, which is just such a, you know, it's a big thing. That's why I was so pleased to hear that they do at least like seem to follow through because it's a one-off story. So like they can kill off Superman and it can be impactful. Yeah. In the regular show series, Spider-Man dies and say, oh, okay, when's he back? A year? All right. <laughs> you, know, it, it, you can't have the, that impact anymore. Exactly. Manga. Yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> um, they can almost be too bad about like having characters survive, you know, the most insane situations. But that's normally because, unless it's Dragon Ball Z, if a character dies, they're dead. And they don't tend to bring them back. Yeah. And that way, at least, you can have that drama in a character passing on. Yeah, it, make, it makes death a, a scary, real, impactful part of it. Where, you know, I mean, the first time Superman died was his fight with Doomsday in the 90s. And they, I think he was dead for all of two months before yeah. they brought him back. And it's like, uh, all right. I mean, they weren't going to kill Superman because it's Superman. You you got to sell comics. You have to sell things. But um, yeah, you know, I, I like that point about the death thing because it's, it's yeah. very different, the two mediums. And Part of which I think is because manga, you know, you got issues one through 50. That's the whole story. Someone yeah. dies, they die. Yeah. Whereas it's just like, like, fuck it, issue 2000. What can we do? Uh, bring bring him back. You know what I mean? It's because like, no one has 2000 ideas for one character. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're Oda, I guess. But, you know, <laughs> that's a point. That's kind of a, that's kind of a one of one, you know? Yeah. 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 Although famously, he doesn't kill off his character so he can bring him back, you know. So he just, even he doesn't do that. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, but yeah, man. Well, uh, kind of to, to wrap this up, if you had to recommend one ongoing manga to everybody, what's what's one good ongoing manga people could dive into today? Oh, I'm gonna say it again. You know, JoJo Lands just started and it had a fantastic first issue, and it's you know monthly, so it's 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 low commitment. You can check in once a month and uh, it's, it's going to be really cool following a manga, a Jojo part as it comes out. Cause that's a rare treat. You know what I mean? Yeah. This will be my first Jojo part that I get to follow actively exactly. as it comes out. It's the first part that started a, um, after the anime started, you know what I mean? Which is crazy. <laughs> it's got, I've got my little I've got Jolina here as well. There's more crap I keep on my desk. <laughs> Big it. JoJo head. I love it. Really recommend it. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right, man. Well, dude, I appreciate you taking time out of your day, reading some Superman, coming on to talk with me and, you know, share some more perspective because, you know, that's what I want because we, you know, we have these, these two worlds, but, you know, 
<laughs> two worlds, two one world. family. <laughs> no, thanks for having me. It was. I'm. I'm so glad I finally read Superman Legacy. It was all stars. <laughs> uh, it was so much. I'm gonna finish it. It was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And um, you know, for everybody out there, you know, make sure you like check out this dude's channel and stuff. I'll leave the the link in the description. You know, all the standard YouTube stuff that we got to say, right? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, man, it was good talking with you. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll see you around, and uh, yeah, man, take it easy. All right. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely.